courthouse. I mean, it's not a good, but holy smokes, it was about a million degrees in there. Okay. <laughs> so I want to talk about what, uh, here, class, what, what month is it right now? August. August. Okay. What year is it? Wrong. Okay. It's 1939. Okay, it's 1930. If you ask an expert in August, even August, and that's getting kind of late because September's when things really kicked off in Europe. But let's just say, if somebody asked in early 1939 or 38, is there a world war going on? And they said, no, no, there's not a world war going on. There's the, the Japanese have invaded Manchuria. There's conflict in the rest of China. There's a civil war going on in Spain. Uh, the Italians have, are, are, are conquering Ethiopia, things like that. But it's not a world war. There's just regional conflicts going on. And then September of 39 hit, and everybody said, oh, I guess we're at a world war. Yeah, we are at a world war right now. It is a raging world war around the world and right here. Right here, okay? Everybody here knows somebody, I guarantee it, that's been affected by fentanyl, okay? That is the worst insecticide in history. And we'll talk about that more in the Chinese special operators. But right here, it all kicked off, and this is what, a lot of people are not getting this. I don't know how more easy to explain this. In fall of 2021, uh, the chairman, uh, Xi, now, now you've got to look at everything. Right now, Russia is a colony of China. Iran is a colony of China. North Korea, Venezuela, they are colonies of China, and they are proxies, and they are proxies waging a worldwide war. So in fall of 21, the chairman uh, calls a meeting, and he brings in, and they, they, the, the, uh, Putin comes in and says, okay, this is the, the no limits agreement to topple America to win, to collapse America. I don't know how much clearer we have to be. They have declared war on us already. That's going on right now, it's raging. But Putin says, I will deliver as part of my part, I will deliver the Ukraine in 72 hours. Why did he say 72 hours? Well, the American intelligence community said, well, uh, Russia's gonna invade and it's gonna be over in 72 hours. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, are we provoking, encouraging this? But, okay, the intelligence committee got it right, but they got it wrong. They got it right, he's going to evade, but 72 hours, no, no, no. But, I mean, Putin, and you got to look, Putin and Xi, look at uh, the American, I was in Desert Storm 1, I, I, I was in an armored cavalry unit, but they look at Desert Storm as the model for warfare. And Putin says, Mr. Xi, Chairman, I will deliver Ukraine in 72 hours, and se two and a half years later, here we are. But that was, just, that was just the one. That was operation number one. But then when uh, Afghanistan, just off the map over here, and the most horrible, horrible collapse ever uh, of American foreign policy, they said, well, obviously, Americans don't care about anything. And uh, so, we, uh, you know, so we're going to start operating. And Iran, you know, you, so Iran got the mission. You tell your, the 3-H club, Hamas, Hezbollah, Hooties, the 3-H club. This is not a farm club here. This is the 3-H. These are evil terrorists. Okay? These are bad people. Okay? So you got the Hamas. You got the mission. Start planning against Israel. And they did. Because we got the planning documents now. And they, they, modeled everything off of, uh, they modeled everything off of how Americans do military operational planning. I mean, we got all the documents. So October 7th, boom, that kicks off. Shortly after that. Boom, this kicks off, okay? And then shortly after that, we got out just raging in Iraq, in Syria, and Hezbollah up here. So this was the Middle East front, okay? And you also, by the way, it's really not getting a whole lot of attention in America. Uh, China is sponsoring a fight club between two of its proxies right here, Iran and Pakistan, who are exchanging ballistic missiles and killing each other on their borders there. So even among their own side, they're, they're staging a fight club. I mean, this shows the evil nature of them. Okay, so this is what we got going. We got the European front, we got the Middle Eastern front. Now, what's going to happen next? We're going to talk about that. Oh, okay, here are the Houthis, the Bab el Mandab. You know, most of Europe, European sustenance goes right through. That's about 1.8 miles right there, that side to side. That's it. Okay, that's where it's all going on right there, that action point. And then you got the big Chinese spy base right here in Djibouti. Okay, right down the road from Camp Lemonier. 
So uh, a bizarre situation, which they probably have long-range missiles there. Uh, that's what they do, uh, the S-300, S-400. So this is right there. Europe depends on this. We actually could survive without this, but the problem is when they're pressured here, it pressures our supply chains in other locations. Okay, this is where the action's gonna take place. Okay, and now, after China gets called out by NATO, the NATO su summit, like it or not, okay, and I'm not advocating expansion of NATO or, or, or EU or any of those kind of things, but after the EU, uh, the, at the beginning of the EU summit, uh, or excuse me, the NATO summit, uh, China's called out as being the whole reason Russia's standing in, the, in Ukraine right now is because all the support they're getting from, from Russia. Nobody else makes, does anybody else, does anybody here make 152 millimeter artillery shells? Does anybody here make 122 milli millimeter artillery shells? No, no, nobody here makes that. No, the only place that makes this is China, okay? And the machine tooling they give to North Korea and Iran to do this, okay? It's China. The only reason Russia is still standing, and it is an absolute, I mean, people are, get advocacy either way here. It's a, it's a standstill down in Ukraine because of drone warfare. But right here, this is the next step right here. Because, uh, and right after China gets called out, what do they do? Well, they deploy a special operations task force to really uh, give the bird to NATO and say, oh, yeah, you're going to call us out? Well, we're going to deploy force right into Central Europe right here. And they exercise right up against the Polish border. And this is what Putin wants is a land bridge to uh, Kaliningrad, which is sovereign uh, Russian territory, legally or not. But, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the Russian psyche, they feel that if they leave Kaliningrad, which used to be class, what did Kaliningrad used to be? Konigsberg? Konigsberg, okay? They feel if they leave, Hitler will literally leap from the grave again, okay? So, I mean, it really, I mean, I'm not making this stuff up here. So they, they, want, they want to keep their boot on Kaliningrad, but they want a land bridge, and that means ripping off part of Poland and ripping, ripping off part of Lithuania. So this is where your, the, the kinetic war in Europe is gonna take place right there. Okay, but it gets better. Okay, the Americas, and everybody knows, this is willful, this is an invasion. We have Chinese, uh, we got Chinese nationals overseeing the, so if Chinese nationals can walk around northern Mexico with, not, with no harm between the, the cartels, what does that tell you? What is the signal? Who works for who? <laughs> well, that means the cartels work for China. You got Chinese paramilitaries walking around northern Mexico between the warring factions, not touched. Nobody touches them. Well, it's because they have a special status. They are now the bosses, okay? And they're sending their special operators throughout here. People, uh, several people, where are they going? Well, you know, What's the largest Chinese city outside of China? Well, it's New York, okay? But it's all over the country, and they gravitate toward high cash operations. Cannabis, please tell me nobody in here is an advocate of cannabis or hangs around cannabis shops. Any high cash operation, perfect formula for skimming that money and using for malign influence operations such as election malfeasance, okay? Nothing good comes out of cannabis, even if it's legal, you can't, you can't bank uh, cash uh, from cannabis, okay? It's, it's against federal law. Any high cash operations, perfect opportunity for, or that's where, that's, where they're, that's where they're moving toward. Gambling, you know, sinful activity like that. This is just crazy, this is crazy. That's what they're gravitating toward. Right here, we have essentially a missile crisis in Cuba. You know, when I was in Key West, and you might've seen me on War Room uh, last year in 23, um, Hey, we got a second missile crisis going on right now in Cuba. I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that the Chinese have already introduced, now they don't have one spy base in Cuba, they have five now. We have to depend on the Wall Street Journal to be the font of intelligence uh, for, uh, for America. We can't even count on our own. I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is below the cut line of the intel collection priority stack. We're not even paying attention to what's going on in Cuba, or by the way, the Bahamas right there, which is, or, uh, or down, uh, down there uh, in Haiti. Uh, but the Chinese have missiles, the S-300, S-400, that can reach all the way up there and knock down an airliner over Orlando, or it could be used surface to surface. You know, double prizes, this is crazy. 
We're not doing anything about it. Okay, we got right here, okay? Now, Panama, we got Molino now, who's a populist, and he's pro-America, whether Biden or, or, or Kamala like it or not. He's pro-America, and he wants to be pro-America, and his job, one, is to get the Chinese out. One, he doesn't want the, uh, 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 the uh, pass where they're coming up here from uh, Colombia, the, the Darien Gap, but he also knows China's trying across Nicaragua, across Mexico, two places, and even down here in Colombia, a land bridge, and maybe even potentially another canal, that'll take decades, to put Panama out of business. And, you know, that, you know, Panama's out of business, there, I mean, if that, that canal's out of business, Panama goes away. Um, and you got Venezuela. Talking about elections here, it was patriots down in Venezuela they got like 80% of the printouts from the machines. You know, and, and you know, where did election machines and election software come from? Well, in the 90s in Venezuela. Why in the world was Venezuela a hotbed of software for election machines in the 90s? Okay, but right now they got the receipts. Even Tony Blinken, the greatest uh, uh, enabler of election fraud with his, uh, his work of the 51 Intel officer letters saying, Hey, Venezuela, you cheated. Uh, you know, you're, you, you, you should step down. Maduro, you should step down. Uh, um, so, but the Patriots got the receipts at a lot of the precincts in the polls. It's like 80% of the receipts that showed uh, uh, Maduro's out and Gonzalez should win. But, but this is, again, uh, fall of uh, 23 is when he got called to Beijing, Maduro, and said, hey, what are you doing for the war effort? You better start going for this offshore area up here above Guyana and start a conflict in the Americas. But this is, this is our front lawn. We've forgotten about it. Our State Department is just, we, we just don't care about South, Central and South America. This is horrible. Give them the time of day, please. This is, this is horrible. So um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, we'll come back to this here, but uh, it's so bad that Korea and Japan are working closely together here because of the threat from North Korea and because of the drum war, war beat, uh, the, the war drum beat from China. So the Koreans and the Japanese are working together, which is a big deal, okay? You got Taiwan, we're gonna cover this more. You got a lot of the shoving and close to shooting going on right down here on 2nd Thomas and Scarborough Shoals. And again, that, that, this is about two to three mile gap right here uh, in, the, in the, uh, the Straits of Malacca. And I've been down to, I used to be uh, one of the liaisons to Singapore. Um, that is where most of the Chinese energy goes right now, right there. They're trying to build a pipeline across from, from Iran, across, um, um, across Iran, across uh, Afghanistan to Pakistan, then up. But right there, that's the choke point. That could kill them right there. And also, you know, food, but also 50% of their food actually comes from Iowa and North Carolina, which explains influence operations in those states. Okay. Okay, so you got Scarborough up here. You know, this is like uh, 80 to 100 miles just due east of Manila right there. You got Second Thomas. That's where the old U.S. LST from World War II was running around in the 90s. And it gets getting very violent right here. So this is bad. The Filipinos are, uh, are doing very good. They're really standing up to them. I mean, they're, they're, they, wanna, they, they, they will fight for the Philippines. So this, this, is, this is really... but. This is where very possibly the shooting in the Pacific theater will start, but let's go to this one. Oh, well, here's also another very likely place. What is this? This is the air route map over the Straits, over the Taiwan Straits. And I was in, uh, you might have seen me on War Room in January. I was covering the, covering the elections. They made this right af after the DPP and, and William Lai won. They changed, they unilaterally changed the routes to push uh, the north-south route of M503 right up to the center line and create these new hard right turns. Uh, this one really actually kind of goes right over Kinman. We're gonna talk about this, but this is provocative. This really weaponizes civil air traffic and creates a possible shoot down episode, which is what China wants. They don't care if it's even their own people, they don't care. They want an incident and it might happen right here, right here. And I'll be there in September too uh, to cover, a, a, get a, 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 with a, a a, a group of journalists to cover. Uh, we're going to meet all with all the different uh, uh, ministries of the government of Taiwan. So, in case of any conflict, 
this is what we got to do. We got to block the north. We got to block the south uh, to really create a kill zone right in here and make it, as Admiral Paparo said, a drone hellscape, a drone hellscape. Uh, this is actually very shallow, not good for submarines, not good for submarines, but it can actually be real rough surface weather. But this is Okinawa. This is Ishigaka, which is Japanese territory, but along with Japan, we're putting long-range missiles here. This is the, the Botanese Islands, Filipino halfway between. We're actually putting weapons here, and the Chinese don't like it uh, because their submarines have to run through here, and uh, they're very concerned about this. So the Chinese may seek to seize these islands right here. And we're putting long-range missiles here in the top of the Philippines also. And this is where uh, this is where with the Chinese, what the Chinese want to do is break any kind of attempt to bl block here, and they want to block the Pacific side of of Taiwan. Uh, and one of their goals, so so this is the, the forward islands of Taiwan. They may try to swipe Matsu, uh, Matsu, but really Kinmen, that's the real one that's very very vulnerable. Suwao is a big naval base that I've been to for Taiwan, and it immediately goes into the deep Pacific. Very possibly Taipei's up here. They may just come around because seizing that would kind of help secure the Pacific side and give them immediate deep ocean access. These are all the TSM siege plants, okay, the six big ones. They're all on the China side. Everybody in here has a chip from TSMC in one of their products, I guarantee it. This is Kinmen. That hard right turn I showed on the air traffic route essentially puts a Chinese airliner who would come down, take a hard right turn, declare an in-flight emergency, boom, you land immediately on the one, the one um, runway on Kinmen. You got 200 Chinese special operators burst out. Now, we actually have uh, 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 a special operations team here and a special operations pet presence for first special forces group already. So we got troops on the ground here right now. Now, right here, this is little Kinmen. 4,000 feet for freedom right there. That's all it separates at the center line. And that's very likely where if they tried the landing here, they'd immediately try to come across here. So very scary, very scary. This is where a lot of the action, this is the second island chain, Guam, U.S. territory, Northern Mariana, Mariana Islands, U.S. territory. Palau, 18,000 people. There's more people in the Pentagon on a single day than Palau, okay? And President Whips is going, hello, U.S., help me here. Uh, the Chinese are ripping off. They just stole tw uh, 20,000 documents out of the government of Palau Networks. Hello, need some cyber help here. Uh, and, but look, at this is essentially, they're trying to essentially go around our second island chain because they also have essentially already seized the Solomon Islands down here. That this is, this, the Iron Curtain has descended on the sake my, my grandpa fought here, okay? Right here, Guadalcanal. New Caledonia is up in flames. That's up in flames here. There's, that's French New Caledonia, and there was rioting there, absolutely part of the Chinese malign influence campaign. And once these are seized, Australia is cut off. Oh, it gets even better. This is the Tumen River. Everybody knows where the Tumen River is, right? Yeah, so this is the river that separates North Korea, North Korea here, okay, from Russia. Ten miles up this river, and I've actually measured that in great detail. That is ten miles, and you hit Chinese territory. There's now a three-way agreement to develop this river and actually create a large naval base here. Okay, this is not good news. This would be a new, there's a, there's a, Southern Fleet, the Eastern Fleet, and the Northern Fleet for China, this would be a northernest fleet, a more northern fleet, so they're going to have to rename their fleets. This is not good, because what happens when they develop this base, this gives them quick access. They don't even have to come out, because all their other points of access to the, to the Pacific, they have to go through allied territory. And the South Koreans, the Japanese, have a very powerful navy, each one of them very, very powerful. And so they can actually take a hard left out, out of the port, go up. This is all Russian territory, Russian territory, hide behind this island, boom, and they come come out, boom, they're in the deep Pacific, or they can go up to the <coughs> Alaskan Arctic. And I think this is my last slide. This is where, this just happened, and this was part of the Chinese response when NATO called them out and said, hey, China, you are the whole reason Russia is still fighting the war in, in Ukraine. You're a bad person. And part of it, they said, oh, yeah, you think we're bad? Well, we're deploying troops right to Central Europe, and we're sending a huge message. On July 10th, four uh, Chinese and Russian vessels. Now, 
I'm an Army guy, but I've done, had to do a number of point papers for the chairman and, and, uh, and the Secretary of Defense in the White House on, on a freedom of passage uh, through uh, uh, under the law of seas. It's called innocent passage. I think we should, uh, if Blinken, uh, uh, in addition to uh, going after Maduro and Venezuela, should be filing a, a strong protest. We will never allow Chinese and Russian ships again through here, because on innocent passage, you're not allowed to move and loiter. Well, they definitely loitered here, okay? They played around. And then, unprecedented, right here on July 24th. Now, the Soviets and then the Russians have done this for years. Okay, so what? Big deal. This time, it was Chinese and Russian nuclear-capable bombers. Okay, that was unprecedented. Never been done before. So this is very concerning and scary. Now, does anybody notice anything interesting about this map? Is there a blue circle anywhere on this map? Cobra Dane radar, okay, so we, this is a very powerful uh, radar on Shemya that sees deep into Russia and China. Do you think there's any coincidence they're hanging around here or flying around here? All okay. right. First thing they're going to do on any kinetic action is they're going to decapitate the Cobra Dane radar. Now, the Cobra Dane radar, I mean, Shemya is a pretty desolate island, but we don't have missiles there. We don't have troops there. We have Raytheon contractors. I believe, and I apologize, maybe I shouldn't have said right. I think, I think they're Raytheon contractors. That's it. No, there's nothing there now. There's no, there's no, that's 40 years ago that went away. That, that's, that's, that's history. Um, and that's the problem. We don't have essentially no ADAC um, and uh, 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 Atu's over here, but we had one at ADAC around here. That went away 40 years ago easily. We used to have one up here on, uh, I think it was Kodiak. Where's Kodiak? Kodiak Island somewhere. I think that's Kodiak. Gone. Okay. We have no capability. I mean, that's a radar sitting by itself. You know, they either land a special operations raid or, you know, that, that four-pack of, of bombers could have carried roughly 24 missiles. I mean, they would have devastated that. Or even here, they could have launched a, uh, missiles from the ship. So they definitely were sending a strategic message, but, you know, our... DOD and IC, I think they're distracted. I don't think they get the significance of what happened. They're going to knock that out. So there you go. I mean, that's um, now that was a passage of one of their ballistic missile submarines from through the straits. That's a very bad idea. I mean, they might have been sending a strategic message, but submarines are very, very vulnerable on the surface here. Bad idea. That was going south through the straits uh, just in, I think it was June. Okay. Um, so the fight is here. The fight is all around us. For 97% of us, we have to spend most of our energy right where we're at in our county, securing our county, making sure we have a clean county, the elections aren't stolen, fentanyl uh, and is, is, is removed from our societies. That's where, so most of the people in the room, that's where the fight is. That's what we need you to do is fight, fight, fight right in your county. I mean, we have no president right now. We, we apparently don't have a president right now. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, for now, since January 20, we have uh, 21. It's clear we haven't had a president. I mean, it's some, a GS-15 at the White House Situation Room is answering the phone. I mean, that's our president. And I, I don't, I, God bless GS-15s, but I don't think that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's local action. The good news, take, take, take heart from Venezuela, where a lot of people grab those documents. So work and be an election officer. And, and work behind the counter counting votes, not in front of the counter being a poll watcher. That doesn't really help, doesn't accomplish. Get behind the counter and be an election officer and get those receipts and make sure we have a clean election. And uh, there you go. God bless you. God bless America. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs>